Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is so exciting because I am going to be attempting to read for 24 hours straight and I am determined to be successful. It is currently 10.02 p.m. I actually tried to film a video earlier today where I was just gonna read and every time I read I was going to count down a timer from 24 hours. Basically I did read two novellas today and I ended up reading a lot of the novel that I planned to start this video out with but I, w I saw Destiny Sidwell post a video literally today and she successfully atten attempted it and her video inspired me to actually try this. So, if I had been smart, I would have started this earlier this morning, that way when I woke up the next morning, I could just power through. But in her video, she was talking about how the night portion is the hardest portion for her. And the last time I attempted this, which I'll put that up here, I fell asleep around 3 a.m. I think, and I fell asleep until 10 a.m. So I slept for seven hours out of the 24. And so what she did is she started drinking an energy drink right away. I am starting this an hour later than she started. Um, so it's 10.05 right now and I just need to like get started as soon as possible. That way the 24 hours will go quicker. But yeah, I'm gonna start my timer. We're gonna start this little challenge. I'm actually gonna pause it because I haven't started reading yet. But I'm gonna talk about some of the books I plan on reading. He had been with me. I got this on the app Libby and I'm just gonna read it on my iPad. I'm actually 40% the way through. So I'm gonna start with that book because I just wanna get it over with. And then once we finish that book, the next book I have in line is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. My friend Grace let me lent me this and I'm really excited to read it. Um, we'll talk about this later when we get to it. But first we're gonna talk about If He Had Been With Me. It's by Laura Nolan. I actually started reading this in September, but when I started reading it, I was like, ugh, I cannot get into it. The YA could just, like, it couldn't do it for some reason. But then I saw Tara Crowley post a reading sad books for a week or something around like that title or something like that. And this was her favorite book that she read that week. And it made her cry, I'm pretty sure. So I'm on chapter 29 and this is a book that I want to start this off with. I don't know if I should start my energy drink yet. I don't, I don't really know. That's the thing. I think I'm just gonna drink water for right now, try to power through this and yeah. I also didn't min mention I'm back home for Thanksgiving break, which is why I'm actually attempting this is because I don't have school tomorrow or for a couple days. So anyways, yeah, that's a little introduction and let's get reading guys. Let's, let's get into it. Okay guys, I have 18 pages left and so I just want to video record because this book is supposed to make you make you cry. I like know what's gonna happen, but I'm just gonna see if the writing is gonna make me cry. I will I will say I'm really glad that I stuck this book out because it's so good. Like towards the end right now, it's so good. And I just have to say this song fine line coming on right now is a crime. So I'm gonna listen Keep on listening to this song while reading this, okay? Okay. gonna happen but like the ending I I don't even know where to go from here wow let's do a time check it is 11 30 almost so I have 22 hours 22 and a half hours left so oh my gosh I don't even like I don't know how to process that I didn't cry obviously but it was very freaking good 
I'm like, I have to go read this on Goodreads now. I don't know when I want to read it because maybe like a 3.75, I guess. I think. I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do. Oh my gosh, guys, I can't, I can't process this right now. Okay, I just listened to a podcast episode, so I think we're ready to start our next book, which I said would be When in Rome. This sounds really cute. I actually just read the cheat sheet by this author, so I know I like her writing and it's still a point of view and I believe that both of these books are closed door romances, which means that there's like no sex scenes in them. But they're still really good because I've read the cheat sheet. But anyways, my friend Grace lent this to me because we went to Target for their little book sale and she got this one and I got the cheat sheet, like I've said, like seven times. So anyway, she really enjoyed this. I remember what she rated it. I feel like I should just look. She rated it five stars. So I have high hopes for this. I rated the cheat sheet, I think four stars. Um, and yeah, it looks like a very quick read, a little over 300 pages. But here's what it says. So it says, Amelia Rose, known as Ray Rose to her adoring fans, is burned out from years of maintaining her princess of pop image. Inspired by her favorite Audrey Hepburn film, Roman Holiday, she drives off in the middle of the night for a break in Rome. Rome, Kentucky, that is. When Noah Walker finds Amelia on his front lawn in her broken down car, he makes it clear he doesn't have time or patience for celebrity problems. He's too busy running from the pie shop his grandmother left him and reminding his nosy but lovable neighbors to mind their own damn business. Despite his better judgment, he lets her stay in his guest room, but only until her car is fixed. Then she's on her own. When Noah starts to see a different side of Ray Rose, he sees a real Amelia, kind-hearted and goofy, yet lonely from years in the public eye. He can't help but get close to her. Soon she'll have Soon she'll have to return to her glamorous life on tour, but until then, Noah will show Amelia all the charming small town experiences she's been missing, and she'll help him open her, his heart to more. Amelia can't resist falling for the cozy town and her grumpy tour guide, but even Audrey had to leave Rome eventually. So it just sounds like so cute, and I love the small town baker trope thing. I think that is one of my... <laughs> I know you guys did not just see that. It was a mosquito, I swear. I just swatted it. I don't know where it went, but oh my God. <laughs> wow, okay, anyways, I'm super excited for this. We're gonna start. It is 11.45 right now, so we're not even, <laughs> we're not even two hours into this. So, already do my skincare. I actually did that before I even started this video. So I brush my teeth, wash my face, but I do have an energy drink. I don't know if I talked about that. I feel like I don't need the energy drink until I probably will need it around one-ish, maybe two-ish. We're going to try to go as long as we possibly can without drinking it. I did already drink an energy drink. I drank like the accelerated, accelerated brand. And I will say, I drink those all the time. Like I drink them before bed, just because if I'm craving something sweet, and I don't think it really does anything, but I'm gonna try to trick my brain into believing it is doing something. That way I can stay up later. But enough rambling, let's get into this. I'm so excited. like I had to vlog because I'm reading When in Rome and I'm actually on chapter 16 about halfway through and I can't stop thinking about if he had been with me. I'm just I'm just confused because I literally cannot stop thinking about the book but we're going to talk about this since I am almost halfway through. This book is really sweet. I will say this one feels a lot more like rushed. Like I feel like it's very, very quick and I'm not getting exactly all the same feelings of like falling in love with the characters because I feel like it's going so quickly, but we also still have half of the book left. So things can happen, but it is almost 1 a.m. and I'm feeling okay right now. I feel like I look a little tired, but we're gonna keep on going not gonna drink my energy drink until like two I think that's my plan because I just I want to get a little bit further but anyways that's a little reading update right so I just actually finished this book and it is 
1.59, so it's almost 2 a.m. exactly, and I am chugging along. Um, I have to pick out another book though because I did not pick out another one because since I, I like kind of started this video earlier, the two novellas I wanted to read I've already read and all my other Libby books are currently still holded or still on hold so I will basically really fast I'm going to turn off my I'm going to turn that off because it's freezing basically I'm home for Thanksgiving break and what I did is I took all of my physical TBR besides the books that are in Lawrence um, in my home or in my college town and then also all the books that are classic so I took all my TBR besides those and I put them in piles I will show you actually I'm gonna light my Christmas tree really fast basically I put them in these three piles and I actually started wrapping them because I'm sure you guys have seen the trend where you wrap your physical TBR as you can see I have a lot on my physical TBR but I ran out of wrapping paper so these are my TBR apart from a few other books but basically I need to pick out of this selection I don't know exactly what I'm feeling I'm like I don't really want to read this series yet because the third and final book is coming out in January and I just feel like um, I feel like when the entire series is out I'm gonna want to read it so I'm not feeling this I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think this, oh god, this book would be one of those that's like very quick to get through. Oh my gosh, it's less than 300 pages. So I think this is a good contender. So we're gonna put this to the side. Men Without Women is a short story book where maybe this one is very thin. But the only thing is it's considered a classic, so I don't know. I also left some other books on on my TBR out of the pile, and I'll show you those really fast. So I'm not going to show you the books, but I had my friends pick four books from my physical TBR because I had my friends pick four books for my physical TBR because I want to do a video that's like my friends pick my TBR or whatever my friends control what I read for a week so I'm not going to show you those four books but I left those books out and then I also left these four books out because um well I actually should probably put these on my shelf one of them is a devotional and I'm probably just going to start it in the new year maybe and then the other one is a nonfiction book and I just know that those two books are not ones that I want to wrap and choose the other two is, I know this is going to be in my December TBR because it's one day in December and I haven't read it yet. And the other book that I have is another book by Josie Silver and I just left it out. So I think these two books are going to be the books I plan on reading. I'm going to start with this one just because I think it's a little bit shorter and... Yeah, I'll read the back of this one. What if you knew exactly what, when you'd meet the love of your life? Eddie Meyer knows her date. Her grandmother, Glory, has accurately predicted the date. Every single member of the family has met their match. Eddie's is June 24th, 2022, when she's 29 years old. That morning, she boards an airplane to her twin sister's surprise engagement. When a handsome musician sits be beside her, she knows it's meant to be. But fate comes with more complications than Eddie expected, and she can't fight the nagging suspicion that her perfect guy doesn't have perfect timing. And after a shocking revelation rocks Eddie's carefully constructed world, she's forced to consider whether love chooses us, as simple as destiny, or if we choose it ourselves. So, yeah, I've read Ornstein's um, three other novels. She was, like, I think the first author I read for contemporary romance, so it's kind of kind of like this not nostalgic but I don't know like I feel like I have to read all of her novels just because she like started me off in the world of contemporary romance if that makes sense but anyways I'm gonna see how far I can get into this oh it's literally about to say I'm gonna get 
I'm gonna see how far I can get into this without like starting to feel tired, but I just yawn. So we're gonna go and I will just pick up the camera when I need to drink my energy drink. But where is, hold on, let me see our time. Got out of the 20 hour mark, so we have a little less than 20 hours left. Um, but yeah, I've read two books, which is pretty good. I don't know how many books people typically read, but yeah, I'm gonna start this. Guys, I can't make this up. I don't know what is happening, but the book I just read, When in Rome, her name is Ray Rose, Amelia Ray Rose. And she goes to Rome because she's obsessed with Audrey Hepburn. The main character's sister's name is Rachel, Rachel Amelia, and she goes by Ray. And Audrey Hepburn has been mentioned. I don't know if this is like fate or what, but this is very strange. Just the connections that are happening. It's very interesting. Okay guys, it's happening. It is 2.30 and I am starting to get very, very tired. So, to combat this, before I have the energy drink, I want to eat. I'm not gonna take my camera because there's no way I'm going upstairs and talking. Cause I have a family who is asleep at this crazy time. So, I'm gonna go make some food, bring it down here, and talk to you guys. I'll give you like a little food haul, you know? Okay, so, getting up definitely helps. I will show you guys what I have here. So first I have a banana, and then I have a gluten-free bagel, and I put some natural peanut butter on it, and it has melted so much, so this is going to be very messy, so I'm not going to be reading while I'm doing this. Actually... I wonder if I can find an audiobook. I was trying to get an audiobook for this video, well, just in general, but it would have been helpful because I did listen to an audiobook last time. Um, and it was Disability, or Disability Visibility. I've talked about this book a lot. It's on my November TBR. But it says it will be available to me soon. But I still don't have it, so I'm gonna see if there's an audiobook on um on YouTube. Guys, I feel so bad. I went to the bathroom and guess who woke up and started barking. Come on. If you're gonna be like that, get bed. Go to bed. Oh, that dog. Okay, I'm done for my little break. Like I said, I'm gonna save my banana. I'm gonna read for a little bit, cuddle with Vincent. I'm gonna try to go one more hour and then I'll probably drink the energy drink. Yeah, it's almost three right now. So. Guys, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I fell asleep. Okay, okay, I know, I know. Get my energy, Ener energy. <laughs> In an energy drink because it's time, okay? Well, I was in bed after I talked to you guys, after I ate my little snack around 3.30, started reading, I fell asleep around 4. I woke up at like 4.20 because I realized I was not supposed to be asleep, obviously, and then I set an alarm for 5.20, and it is, or sorry, 5.30, and it is 5.20 right now. So I slept for about an hour and a half, give or take, and we're gonna keep on chugging along. Still gonna keep on going because I feel like that's not that bad. I did wanna see if the full 24 hours and I failed that, but it's okay because we will attempt this again eventually. But for now, if we're only down like an hour and a half, I feel like that's pretty good. And I am about halfway through this book. So we're gonna keep on reading, and yeah, that's my little update. I'm just gonna watch Destiny's video to motivate me while I'm doing this. It's about 6.30, I have 15 and a half hours left. I just finished my 
third book so i'm gonna rate this really fast that means i'm gonna start the two lives of lydia bird next and yeah this is going smoothly i am a little upset i fell asleep my mom came in here at six and she said that she woke up and peeked in here at four and then at five and she was like i think you only slept for around over a little over an hour technically i did fail but we're gonna keep on going the next time i do this i won't fall asleep i will say i was up all day long yesterday so i feel like that has to count for something but it's fine it's fine i'm gonna rate this and then i'll be back for the fourth book okay it is 6 45 and i just put on my pjs which is kind of funny because it's like an actual time like my mom is up it's like a time where people are actually getting awake and i do feel much more energized so i think the one and a half hour i'm just gonna say we didn't we missed an hour and a half anyway so i'm gonna start talking about it i'm just i wish i would have drank my energy energy drink a little sooner but anyways okay we're gonna be talking about this book so i bought this such a long time ago literally maybe freshman year of college and now almost a second semester junior and the reason i bought it is because it reminded me of one true loves by taylor jenkins reed or taylor jenkins reed which i read my freshman year of college and it's kind of like um to love thing kind of it, re it reminded me of it not the exact same but i will go ahead and read the back of it lydia and freddie freddie and lydia they're about to wed after almost a decade in love but then on lydia's 28th birthday freddie dies in a tragic accident though she's racked by grief lydia knows that freddie would want her to, her to try to live happily even without him with the help of her family and friends, she takes her first tentative steps into the world, open to life and even love again. Then something unbelievable happens. Lydia gets another chance at her old life with Freddy. Lydia is pulled again and again through a doorway to her past, living two lives, and possibly at once. But there's a toll in to returning to a world where Freddy alive still owns her heart. Because there's someone in her new life, her real life, who wants her to stay. So... I am very intrigued by this. I always thought the cover was so cute. I was gonna say this till um, I was gonna say this till February because it felt like a like pink book, you know. But I'm like, you know what? We're gonna finally read it. I've had it on my shelf probably for almost two years. So let's get into this one. Out of bed right now. Um, it is. Let's see the time. We have 13 minutes and. 22 or 13 hours and 22 minutes left and I wanted to do a little book update so I am reading this I'm actually about halfway through it right now it's actually super good I went to Libby to see if there's an audiobook that I could listen to because I feel like I need to start getting ready for the day I said at 9 I would do my journaling and then Pilates and take a shower and actually get into some clothes even if my plan is still to read i just want to feel somewhat put together i think it'll just make me feel productive somewhat um but anyways yeah i am 54 percent through this and like i said i really like it i didn't know josie silver was an english author and i i feel like i've said this in videos before but i always love reading literature that is set in the uk i don't know what it is about it i just love it so much and so i was pleasantly surprised when i realized what this was i am gonna say that i'm not doing any spoilers throughout this video if you haven't been able to tell that i'm confused by the love interest that's not a spoiler because she says she finds love in her new life but i'm confused who it is if you've read this book or you plan on reading it maybe you'll understand but i just i i thought i knew like exactly where this book was going but i seem to potentially be wrong i don't know we still have half the book left to figure that out but anyways that is a little that's a little book update i do want to do another book update i was trying to find an audiobook that i could listen to um just like while i'm doing things like making breakfast, taking a shower, things like that. That way I'm still reading. And so I went through my two book stacks and I was feeling romance. So literally all the books I've read, if we look at my 
lineup right now my physical books are three romances and then i also read um what's it called if he had been with me i don't think that's technically a romance it did have romance in it so maybe it's considered a romance but anyways i was i wrapped most of my romances last night so all i have is like scary fantasy literary fiction like that's what my books are and so i picked this one up the maidens and i thought it sounded really good i own the silent patient i listened to the silent patient actually so i think it's fitting that i got the audiobook it was the readily available one and i'm going to start listening to this while i just get ready for the day but yeah anyways that's my that's my plan that's my update for you guys um I feel weird because I want to keep on reading The Two Lives of Lydia Bird, but the audiobook has a two week hold on it. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna listen to this, so. Okay, a long time, no talk. I actually just finished The Maidens. What I did whenever I started listening to this, I listened to mine on, sorry my dog snoring. I listened to my stuff on 2.5 speed, sometimes 3 point speed, so I can get through it really fast. So it's only 12.32 right now, and I just finished this, and I rated it 3.75 stars. It was very good. What I did is I listened to it while I was working out. I got into the shower and then when I got ready and then I had my siblings actually clean the house just for Thanksgiving tomorrow and so I spent a few hours doing that and then I actually ended up wrapping my books. I don't know if I said I was doing that but I finished wrapping all of them by um I wanted like the cute paper but I just used what we had here at home that way I didn't have to spending any money also my dad is working on my car right now so i couldn't even drive if i wanted to but anyways we have finished book number four this is number four in this video and this book's gonna be number five and like i said we're halfway through and now that i'm not moving around i can actually sit down and continue reading this so that's my plan i'm just gonna hang out and read it but yeah, I didn't even tell you what this is about, but basically this is the same author as The Silent Patient, and this book is actually interconnected with The Silent Patient. Very briefly, we get to see like a character crossover, which I thought was cool. Obviously, I read The Silent Patient freshman year, and I don't really remember if I like saw these characters. I'm sure I did, I just don't recall. Um, but yeah, this said Edward Fosca is a murderer. Of this, Mariana is certain. But Fosca is untouchable. A handsome and charismatic Greek tragedy professor at Cambridge University, Fosca is adored by staff and students alike, particularly by the members of a secret society of female students known as the Maidens. Mariana Andrews, Andros is a brilliant but troubled group therapist who becomes fixated on the Maidens when one member, a friend of Mariana's niece Zoe, is found murdered in Cambridge. Mariana, who was once herself a student at the university, quickly su suspects that behind the idyllic beauty of the spires and turrets and beneath the ancient traditions lies something sinister, and she becomes convinced that, despite his alibi, Edward Fosca is guilty of the murder. But why would the professor target one of his students, and why does he keep returning to the rites of Persephone the maiden and her journey to the underworld? When another body is found, Mariana's obsession with proving Fosca's guilt spirals out of control, threatening to destroy her credibility as well as her closest relationships. But Mariana is determined to stop this killer, even if it costs her everything, including her own life. But I really like this. I rated The Silent Patient 5 stars and I rated this 3.75 stars. If I were to read The Silent Patient again, I don't know if I would rate it 5 stars. I think when I read that, it was my first time reading a thriller, and so I was just so overcome with how good it was. So I don't know how accurate that 5 star rating is, but anyways, I was very happy I read this one. I feel like we've read some good books so far, and yeah, I'm gonna, like I said, just start reading The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. I'm just like chilling right now i don't know i don't know why but that's the vibe
Okay guys, we we need to talk about this book. I just finished it, rated it five stars. I don't know if it's actually a five star book. I could just be like post reading it just in love with it. But I nearly cried and I never cry. And I still didn't cry, but I nearly did. This one made me cry more or almost cry more, feel the need to cry more than if he had been with me did. And I don't know, I love this little storyline. It's very similar to One True Loves by Taylor Jeans Reed. And I, it's like, you know what's gonna happen, but still just like the writing and how it's done is so amazing. And I don't know, I it makes you appreciate love, which I think it even says that somewhere on the back of it. A novel that will make you laugh, cry, and think about the precious gift of being in love. Like it is really such a gift. Like. Being capable of love it's, it's just amazing and this book was really sweet and now I'm in a dilemma because I'm like what do I read now because I wrapped all my TBR books except for four of those which I said were for a different video so I don't want to bring those into this video. And then the fifth one is a One Day in December, this book right here that's on this little sticker and I don't want to read that till December because you know. And so I'm thinking my last like little Colleen Hoover, um, my last physical TBR books that I left in Lawrence because I didn't even think I would be reading them here was the Maybe Someday series by Colleen Hoover. And so I feel like I'm gonna see if it's available on Libby. It looks like it's working. So I think this is gonna be the next book we read just because like I said, want to read all the books on my little TBR because obviously like I have the four books I have that and then those over there are for when I read everything that's not wrapped at least that's a plan right now so yeah anyways that's a little update I I am just amazed because I am starting my sixth book and a I have eight and a half hours left less than eight and a half hours left and basically I just slept for an hour and a half which I think I am proud of I'm proud of that I don't think I am pretty proud of that because I at that point I hadn't even had my energy drink I will say I wish I did drink it before because maybe I could like say I actually stayed up the entire 24 hours but it's fine an hour and a half like that could have been spent doing other things you know like when I was cleaning I could have not been reading but technically I was reading while doing that so I think it just makes up for it I'm I am declaring that so far I have been successful and I will continue to be for the next eight hours so if anyone wants to fight me just don't because there's no getting past my facade of belief right now tell me your sister's in cosmetology school without telling me your sister's in cosmetology school. I'm getting hungry, so I just thought to change the scenery. This is our kitchen. I mean, this is the kitchen part of it. That's the dining room, but anyways, you don't care. Just want one of these. So I'm gonna make this. Also, I put like the best lotion ever. Are you? It's the best lotion ever, but it's also like one of the greasiest. My hands are so dry though, so I lather them. And I try not to get it on my palm because it makes it so greasy. But basically, I'm lotioning my hands. That was the point of that entire clip, sorry. update we have less than four hours left i have finished six books and i think i'm gonna start another one so i went ahead and finished maybe someday it was good not well was it good i don't know it was actually the lowest rated colin hoover book i've ever had i rated it two stars because i just i don't know there's something about it i don't it could have been my reading setting that kind of changed it but just didn't really like the trope it was 
it's kind of hard to read like a man falling in love with another girl while he's dating another girl so don't really like the cheating trope but can probably say that but the next one is maybe not and that is a little novella and i'm thinking that i could read that i'm gonna try to read this because why not it's here and yeah this is the next book on our little agenda guys i am literally about to fall asleep it is currently 7 19. let's do a time check i did finish the novella and now I'm listening to the audiobook for maybe now. Um, I have two hours and 45 minutes, and I don't know. Don't know, I'm so close. We have under three hours. This is good, this is good. I am just gonna keep on listening to this. I didn't do my journaling this morning because I forgot. So I'm gonna do that and then get ready for bed and just keep on chugging, so. Alrighty guys, I can say I've successfully completed the 24 hour reading challenge. I know I did sleep for an hour and a half, but if you want me to do this again, I definitely will. I know I asked to, if I should do this video like two months ago, but since Christmas break is coming up, I can definitely try to fully stay up for the 24 hours. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about it. I read seven and a half books. And right now I'm going to go through all of the books that I read. Started with was If He Had Been With Me. This I think is considered a young adult book. Let me see if it... I'm pretty sure it's considered young adult. It follows two teenagers. I mean our main character is a girl. I think from like middle school until they graduate. It is supposed to be a book that makes you cry. It's very, very sweet. I rated it 3.75 stars. It didn't make me cry, but it did invoke feelings. And I'm still thinking about it to this day. I mean, it's only a day later. Um, but anyways, I have been thinking about it constantly. Just like when I was in the car, I was like, hmm. Or when I was in the shower, I was thinking, I don't know. I would definitely recommend it. I will say the beginning portion of it, I don't think is that good. But as you continue reading, I think it gets a lot better. I think I saved a quote, let me, said, I want to savor this wonder, this happening of loving a book and reading it for the first time, because the first time is always the best, and I will never read this book for the first time ever again. And I'm like, that was such a good quote, and I told myself I was going to keep on writing down quotes for the books that I read that I really appreciated, but that's the only one I wrote down, so we're gonna forget I even tried to do that. Next book I read was actually When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I ended up rating this one three stars. I think the pacing was what caught me off guard. It was very sweet and it made me like giggle and I was like, oh, they're so cute together. I love the small town baking trope so much for some reason that just gets me. If there is baking involved, I'm sold, I'm sold. Um, this is a very quick book, but like I said, I think that just the pacing, it seemed fast, but it also seemed slow. There was something about it just that made me feel a little weird. I do like the cheat sheet more than this book personally, but I still really enjoyed it. And like I said, rated it three stars. Next book I have is called Meant to Be Mine. Oh, where is it? I ended up rating this one at two stars. It was okay, but it wasn't like the best thing I've ever read. I found myself wondering what was gonna happen, but also at the same exact time, I knew exactly what was gonna happen. And I don't know, maybe like the pacing on this one was a little weird too. I thought the idea was really cute. I just, I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. I rated it two stars, like I, like I said. Then I ended up starting The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. I rated this one at five stars. I think this is my only five star book out of all the books I read. Um, I don't know what it was about this. Something about this particular trope where there's two choices and it's like a first love and then a current love or not even that of old life and a current life. And I just, I thought this book was so sweet. Um, yeah, like I said, rated it at five stars and I love a book that's set in, it's, I don't think this one's set in London, but set in the UK. I just love that vibe so much. I'm a sucker for it. And yeah, I just thought it was very cute. I liked the character a lot and would definitely recommend this one. I actually started a audiobook, but I do have a physical book and that is The Maidens. I kind of, I mainly listen to this on audiobook, but here and there I did pick this up and read it. I finished it reading it and I ended up reading this, what did I read it? I ended up reading this one 3.75 stars. I thought it was really good. Again, this is set in London, I think, or Cambridge. Set in Cambridge and I just, I did really appreciate it. I like his writing a lot. I like the Greek telling and 
I always love when I when they're talking about something academic and I know exactly like what they're talking about like they talked about Medea and I was like oh, I know who that crazy lady is not crazy but you know anyways I did really like this one from what I know I do think I like the silent patient more but I also really appreciated this one and I know I said this earlier in this video but I loved how the two books tied in together I thought that was super neat but yes and then after I finished that one I was like okay trying to think of what was on my TBR so I read maybe someday maybe someday on my iPad and I also read maybe not completely let me see the, they are definitely my least favorite books I rated maybe someday two stars and I think I rated maybe not 1.5 stars or 1.75 stars it just wasn't for me I didn't really like it and I'm currently reading maybe now um, I'm about halfway through it, which is why I said I read seven and a half books. But yeah, that is like the end of this reading challenge. I'm really proud. I can't believe I read seven and a half books. Like that is insane. And yeah, that is it. I was going crazy last night. That's why I didn't end this video last night. I was listening to the audiobook of Maybe Now and I kept on like, or like going like, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna read this. And literally I was in bed and as soon as my timer went off, dead i was passed out gone to this world it was it was pretty nice i did sleep very good and it's thanksgiving today and i just baked some pumpkin cookies which i will have a vlog out that's me baking them so just like be on the lookout for that but yeah that's the end of this video i'm so excited i was able to do this let me know for my next reading challenge if i should do the same thing where i stay up and try to get through the night because once it was mid-morning or like once it was 5 30 ish um i was up i was up for the day and i was fine until that evening so i think like the hardest part for me is like the three to the five o'clock hour I think that is the most difficult so yeah anyways like i like i've said multiple times i am pretty proud of myself and i definitely want to do this again in the future so let me know what changes i should make if i should drink a monster you no know, let me let me know because i'd love to do this again i have a reading vlog coming out soon that's going to be me reading books that my friends recommended me or my friends control my reading i think i mentioned that a few times in this video but yeah that's it um i know this is coming out after thanksgiving so if anybody celebrated hopefully it was a good holiday and i will see you guys very soon bye